Okay, so now we're going to put a bunch of things together and introduce you to some new things, um, some new objects that deal with audio as well as ways of organizing your patch so that it's readable and functionable. That's a word. Um, <coughs> so that you can understand the, the uh, components that are most necessary so you don't see a bunch of what we call spaghetti monsters. All right, so the new object we're going to look at for audio is called Groove. Okay, so remember you control click, get help, and Groove should tell you all about what to expect. We're going to do. Okay, so it's we have a looping sample. We can pause it. We can play it backwards. Okay, and then if you change these to something in between zero and one, you can change the playback speed. Okay, so that's essentially the same thing as um, like a tape, uh, like a tape deck, slowing it back, uh, slowing it down for it to go lower and speeding it up to go faster. Okay, so this you can see we have a lot of fun with this. Uh, do not save. It won't let us save it anyway. So, all right, but Groove works from a buffer. So we need a buffer, and I have some samples we're going to use. So I'm going to call this buffer snare one. Some samples in the desktop. Here we're going to use some of those. And I'm going to use another buffer. I'm going to call this base one. And we're going to get two more buffers. Where's my hi hat? Oops. Hi hat one and IDM one. Okay, so now, whoops, we need a message to uh, read in the samples from our desktop. So if you remember, we use the read command, and then this means user home home desktop samples. This is our samples folder on the desktop, which is in our home folder, and then our I know the name of the sample is snare.wave okay this is called the path it's the the path on your computer so it essentially allows the the computer to know where the sample is and if it doesn't find it it'll give you an error over here so let's just click on it remember command e and one thing you can also do when you're in edit mode you can just hold down command and then you can interact with your patch so you don't have to constantly do command e all right so no error there double click and there's our sample inside the buffer. Perfect. So let's just process and repeat. This is base. Click. There's our base. Uh, this is the hi hat. So we'll just call it hi dash hat. And there's our hi hat. And the last one is a special sample fun and it is called IDM kit 2-3 I believe let's try it and it worked good all right so here's our buffers now I'm going to show you a little trick um, this is all great but we don't want to see it ever again so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this command C okay copy I'm going to hit Command X to cut. Now, remember, it's on your clipboard, so it didn't go anywhere. Now I'm going to make a new object called a patcher, which is starts with P. And this is called a sub patch. And you give it a name. So it's called a sub patcher called buffers. And then it opens up a new canvas. All right, so this is sort of like a canvas within a canvas. And now in here, I can have all my buffers. And then I can make a new object called load bangs. And what it will do is when you save your project and you open it up again, 
It's going to essentially press all these messages for you without you having to do it. And now we can hide them conveniently inside of our sub patcher called buffer. Okay, so if you want to open it again, you just double click so you can hold down command. Remember, we can go in and out of edit mode by just holding down command. And you can see there's your canvas, just like you said, but now it's contained into this little tiny object called the sub patch. Pretty cool. All right, we're going to be using these again uh, in different ways. So you can actually get input and output of sub patches, which we'll do a little bit later. All right, so do we remember all of our buffer names? Groove takes an argument, which is the name of your buffer. So we have snare one. What was it? Base one. I'm just hitting Command D to duplicate objects just for faster replication. We have a hi hat one and IDM one, I believe. So you double click on these, hopefully. Uh, once, yeah, those are all correct. Yeah, once you start playing back, it should load a um, the buffer into Groove, which is cool because you can also change these on the fly if you wanted to and these would still read from that buffer and just be different samples okay so um <coughs> if we remember from the the help if it gets a, a zero that means start at zero milliseconds which means that if you gave it a 100 it would mean start at 100 milliseconds so it's a way of reading into the file so we need four zeros. So I'm just going to hit command D duplicate. Command D duplicate. It's just a quicker way to get a bunch of stuff onto your canvas. All right. Straighten these up a little bit. All right. So now we're going to get a easy DAC for our audio. Very easy. And then I'm going to grab a special Max for Live object, which helps us with our volume. It's called a Live Gain. And it acts like a, a volume switch or a volume knob. And it's really handy. Screw you. Let's just try this first. Uh, yeah, channel two. So we'll put a couple in each. All right, and let's just make sure this works, okay? Um, all of our buffers are there. No, not yet. That's why. Because we rewrote them. Remember, we, we copied and pasted them. All right, so now they should be there. Are they there? There they are. All right. All right, cool. Oops, no, 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 no. All right, let's go back to help. Let me get some other stuff. All right, so now we need to set our speed. And notice how this is different from our playback message. So the playback, start playback at zero goes in as a message. The speed goes in as a signal. Notice the different patch cable which allows you to dynamically change the speed playback, speed of the playback. So we use this object just called sig tilde, which converts any number into a signal. You could also use other signal objects, which would then vary the rate of playback speed. So we're gonna need four of those. Command D to duplicate. All right, now, right now I'm going to just do a float. So I just hit F, remember shortcut for float. And I should be able to change the speed on all of them. You could obviously have four different ones. And let me just go. There we go. Cool. So now let's go like slower.
Okay. So this would be an easy way to um <coughs> change the playback speed. You can also do reverse if you go negative. So I don't know if that one did anything. Yeah, it didn't really do anything. Let's try again. Yeah, some of these aren't going to work with different playback speeds. Um, so let's just keep it positive for now. All right. So let's now connect these to some controllers. So we're going to use our MIDI controller. And then we're going to use, to control the speed, we're going to use a slider. So that will be a, con a control in. All right, so we want to be able to control these four um, really based on either four pads or four keys. And so we want to make sure that if it's any other key, it won't trigger this sample. So the if you remember from the last few uh, tutorials, that we can use the select object or just SEL. And then we give it arguments for the notes uh, or the numbers that we want to scan for. So I'm already going to just do the first four from middle C. So this is going to be middle C, D, uh, E, and F. Okay, so now if you just put bangs underneath, you'll see that these are just going to be triggered whenever I press the key, but we'll know something interesting. It tr triggers it twice. Okay. For right now, that's okay. Um, We're just going to connect these to our samplers. Okay, so you hear that's twice. That's not good. So because every note has a note on and a note off message, when the, the minute you lift up the note, you're going to feel the sample re-trigger again. So we need to not do that. So we're going to do some really simple programming logic to get rid of that. All right, so here's our speed. Make sure we comment everything. So we know what it means. We'll eventually use that to control our speed. All right, so what can we use? Well, there's a really interesting object called a gate. All right. <coughs> The gate lets you control the where place where data gets sent. Essentially, like a gate at your house, you let something in or out. And what ha what happens is that um, you have this, which essentially, if it's got a zero, it means it closes the gate. If it has a one, it will open the gate, um, depending on how many. Uh, outputs you want. We just want one. So we just want to either send the note and if it turn if it's a note off message, we want to make sure that it s basically closes the gate, right? So that means if we get a zero velocity, we want to close the gate. But we want the pitch to pass through and that will go in your right inlet. This is the data that gets passed through as long as this is a one or a zero. Okay? So this shouldn't have changed anything yet. Yeah, if I turn this off, get nothing. Thus the gate. So now what we need to do is basically give it some logic to say if you're greater than one, which is going to say that we have a basically a note on, then go ahead and the output is going to be a zero or a one. And if you're less than one, which would be zero, then you're going to be a zero. All right. So this is a greater than one. And that's basically saying if your velocity is greater than one, you're, you're going to output a one. 
if it's less than uh, one put a zero and that should turn off our gate so now our note off is closing that gate and I only have one bang per note on okay so there's a little bit of fun logic for you and let me make it a little bit easier to see where all that's connected so you can redo it yourself the wonderful thing about max is patch cords everywhere now you see the spaghetti mess okay so velocity goes into our evaluator which is evaluating if it's greater than one or not and then that goes into our toggle which goes into our gate the hot inlet of our gate and then the, m the pitch goes through the pass through or the gate message that we want to pass through here when it's on and thus it goes into our sampler all right that's perfect now we're going to deal with control so um you remember with control we get a value and a control number so if i do my first fader this is the control number, it was 33. And then the value of that control is here. So if I, here's my second con uh, slider, which is 34. So we're only gonna stick with 33. We only want 33 to change the, the playback speed, okay? So <coughs> we're gonna also use a gate for this. and we want this value to pass through. So what we can do here is just use select. As long as you don't mess with the initial state of this toggle, this should work fine. So anytime it selects 33, it should be on. Uh, 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 right, see how that doesn't work. This just keeps banging on off, on off, on off. So we're gonna get some interruption. That happens a lot. So one thing we have to do with this is make sure that anytime we select 33, we're only outputting a one. So I'm going to give it a message of one. This is starting to get really spaghetti-ish. So we're going to have to start putting stuff into sub patches in a minute. Uh, wrong button. There we go. And then if it the cool thing about select is that basically if it's anything else, if the input doesn't match, or if it's any other slider or controller, then we're just going to turn off our gate. So now it should stay on as long as we're playing with the, f the first slider. Otherwise, if I touch another slider, it turns it off. Okay, there is a better way to do this using an object called route, but right now we're just going to kind of work with gate. All right, so... Now we have to just scale our playback speed, which if you noticed, what we would get is a number between zero and 127, which doesn't really help us because we, we need a number between negative one and one. Right now we're just gonna go between zero and one. So a really easy way to scale a MIDI slider is just to divide it by 127. Okay, and now we should get a, a value between 0 and 127, okay? Now, remember this really nasty thing that Max programs have done is that if you're using floating point numbers or decimal points, you have to put a dot after the number. Again, my number one pet peeve with Max is that. So pass it along to the programmers. If they can change that, that would be great. Okay, so now we're getting our playback speed and then we can play our keys. Okay. There we go. Let's try that one more time. All right, so I got a little interactive scratchy thing going on here. <laughs> 